This message is brought to you by NPR sponsor Greenlight. This school year, help your kids learn how to save, invest, and spend wisely with Greenlight, a debit card and money app for families. Get your first month free at greenlight.com slash NPR. Just a heads up, this episode contains some salty language, so be advised. Hey y'all, you're listening to Ask Code Switch. I'm Lori Lizarraga. If you've been rocking with Code Switch from the beginning, beginning, then you know all about our Ask Code Switch series, where we answer your thorniest, realest, most uncomfortable questions about race and identity that come up in your everyday life. And this week, we're tackling a question from a listener in the D.C. Baltimore area. Shout out to Gene and Parker. This listener wrote us a question that's been on his mind for the last year about race at work. Hey, uh, my name is Shaquille Stewart. Uh, I wrote to the podcast because about a year ago, I had a dispute with my employer at the time over the most trivial thing, who's supposed to wash the dishes? Yeah, that's what we're getting into, y'all. The politics of race and dishes in the workplace, which is actually more fraught than it sounds. Shaq doesn't work there anymore, but at the time, he was the office manager for an off-Broadway touring company. See, I took the job in part to get a foot in the door in the theater industry. I, I worked there, started as an intern for five years total. While washing everybody's dishes and cleaning the kitchen wasn't really in my job description, I did it. But as my workload increased, suddenly it started to become an issue that I wasn't clearing out the dishwasher, even if I didn't use any dishes. You know, obviously I'm black as hell. Um, and when I was approached about this issue, a higher up at the company got my supervisor, both of them white women, and they brought me into a storage closet and they sat me down to tell me why it was my job to wash the dishes. Like, through tears, the COO said to me, it'd be great if Heather didn't have to do the dishes right now because she has so much work on her plate. And by the way, Heather is also white. When somebody else starts crying, it makes me want to start seeing things from their point of view. But then, like, there was, like, an inner voice that was like, no, why are you crying? <laughs> like, like, what are you sad for? And, and honestly, it just made me angry. I was like, you know, y'all treat me like a slave in this office. <laughs> But, I mean, to preserve my job and to survive and pay my bills. He sucked it up, emptied the dishwasher. After a few months, though, Shaq wound up leaving his job there. But that breakdown in the broom closet still takes up real estate in Shaq's mind. It still keeps me up at night. Like, was I in the wrong? Um, was there a better way I could have handled this situation? Let me know, because sometimes I still feel off. So, there are a few different things happening in Shaq's story, but I want to focus on the breakdown of this manager-employee confrontation. Who really should have done the dishes? Who was in the wrong? Would the same scenario have played out differently if Shaq and his supervisors were, I don't know, the same race? Why is this situation still keeping Shaq up at night? That's today on Ask Code Switch. We'll be right back. This message comes from NPR sponsor, Sony Pictures Classics, presenting Whiplash. After 10 years, a masterpiece returns to theaters, starring Miles Teller as an ambitious young jazz drummer and J.K. Simmons as his ruthless teacher, in theaters September 20th. Support for NPR and the following message come from Visit St. Pete Clearwater, Florida, where fall color seekers can find 35 miles of sugary white sand beaches and emerald green gulf waters. Explore the kaleidoscopic colors of more than 30 museums and galleries and over 500 street murals. Paddle through vibrant green mangrove tunnels and take in fiery red, orange, and yellow sunsets night after night. Just a few of St. Pete Clearwater's fall colors. More at visitspc.com. Support for NPR and the following message come from Rosetta Stone, the perfect app to achieve your language learning goals no matter how busy your schedule gets. It's designed to maximize study time with immersive 10-minute lessons and audio practice for your commute. Plus, tailor your learning plan for specific objectives like travel. Get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 50% off and unlimited access to 25 language courses. Learn more at rosettastone.com NPR. This message comes from Schwab. 
It's easy to invest in ideas you believe in with Schwab Investing Themes, like online music and videos, artificial intelligence, and electric vehicles. Choose from over 40 customizable themes. More at schwab.com. When voters talk during an election season, we listen. We ask questions, we follow up, and we bring you along to hear what we learned. Get closer to the issues, the people, and your vote at the NPR Elections Hub. Visit npr.org slash elections. I'm Lori. This is S Code Switch. Okay, back to this question from our listener, Shaquille Stewart. This is the type of thing that I really don't want to talk about a whole lot of times because I don't want it to make me unhirable. Like, this dude's going to have a problem with washing dishes. I don't have a problem washing dishes if I'm a dishwasher. If it was like an email that said, hey, Shaq, um, we're changing your job description. This is an added task for you. But as we know, that's not how it happened. I was one of two black people in the office. Needless to say, at the time, I felt a bit slavish, and I told him so. I think that's one of the reasons why it had to be in the storage closet, because it had to be done kind of like in the dark a little bit. Shaq left his job at that company over a year ago now, and he's still asking himself why something so innocuous became so loaded. I don't don't know. To this day, I can't tell you why. So let's start with this. Each year, Pew Research Center puts out this major global public attitudes report. It tracks trends of public opinion year to year on big issues like the economy, U.S. foreign policy, social issues, climate change, war, democracy. Kind of like a how do we do questionnaire, but about the current state of the world. Anyway, the global survey in 2021 was of particular interest because it looked at the public attitude toward diversity and division in 17 different advanced economies. When it came to the cause of division, Americans cited, quote, conflict between people from different ethnic and racial backgrounds more than any other nation surveyed. And that's the kind of preconceived racial conflict that Kareth Foster is trying to help Americans unlearn. My goal is to take the division out of diversity, helping people to become even more introspective, to understand your value and worth so you can see it in someone else. Foster is the CEO and founder of Inversity Solutions, a different approach to traditional DEI programming, one that focuses on what people of different backgrounds have in common, as opposed to what makes us different, which was how she felt witnessing DEI attempts throughout her own career. In fact, in 2007, Foster was brought on to co-host Imus in the Morning after Don Imus was fired by CBS for calling the Rutgers women's basketball team, quote, nappy-headed hoes. Yeah. When Imus came back on the air eight months later, it was on an entirely new platform and alongside two Black comedians, his new co-hosts, one of whom was Kareth Foster. The idea was I was brought into the Imus in the Morning show to have a national dialogue about race and racism in America. No small task for one person, let alone one show. And that really kind of pointed me in the direction of what was going on in the world of diversity and inclusion and the conversations that were being had. I felt like Foster would be the perfect person to unpack Shaq's dishwashing question. As someone who turned her own racially fraught workplace experiences into a full-blown diversity and belonging training program. So I asked her to give me her first unfiltered reaction (laughs) to Shaq's story. I'm listening to this lovely man talk about wanting a career and to further his career and Mm. doing what he thought he needed to do to pull himself up by his bootstraps, right? Isn't that what they say? You have to start at the bottom. You pay your dues, right? But at some point in time, the dues get paid. Mm. And at some point in time, you are not the servant, unless that is literally in your job description. If you are a server, yes. If you are a busboy, yes. That should have been a healthy and mature conversation between coworkers. Just her going to him with the tears was an indication that she knew it wasn't right. You know what I mean? Like, you just gave yourself away, darling. Mm. It is a bit of a cultural thing, especially as people see you in a certain light. And it's unfortunate 
that there is still this this aura around, you know, brown skin service. Yeah. That the people who work beneath me, you know, typically don't look like me. The words that he used to explain how it made him feel is slavish. That's not a word without a lot of of gravity. Do you feel like Shaq was responding the way any person of color in that situation would? Or does does Shaq have something to feel sorry about in the way that he took this? Oh, he absolutely has nothing to apologize for. You know, his choice of words were his choice, his personal choice. You are not wrong for feeling put upon when someone addresses you in a way that makes you feel less than. And you have every right, every ounce in your body to stand up for yourself. And I think it's unfortunate that he even had to think about it like that because of how he was approached and how he was treated. And and I, I applaud him for standing up for himself, for having not just a backbone, but a voice. Because there are a lot of people who do not feel that they can do that because they have bills to pay. Mm. And so they, they have to suck it up, buttercup. And that's horrific. What gets me is I don't honestly think that his boss was truly cognizant. Like, she may have been aware that it was uncomfortable, but I don't even think she knew why. What would you prescribe to that? How could the issue with the dishes have been handled better on several fronts? Certainly, I think that the boss in question would have had to have a little more insight as to why she felt so uncomfortable Mm -hmm. going and and speaking to Shaq about this. Did she know in some way, form, or fashion that it was wrong? But did she know why? What's happening underneath this that feels familiar to some other tensions that happen in the workplace that you see? Well, I think it's just implicit bias, right? Mm -hmm. Where if people look like us, sound like us, yeah. are of the same class and ethnicity, like we we gravitate toward them, right? Birds of a feather flock together. It's not just an expression because it's cute and it rhymes, it's because it's true. So we have to have this awareness. It just means putting a little more effort and energy into how we engage, how we respond, how we react, how we address folks. The irony is I don't feel that sometimes people who have put that person in that position even have the awareness to go there. Yeah. And that's that's what needs to change. I just feel like it's the wrong person asking, like, what could I have done different? Honey, that's a whole other episode for you. <laughs> right? Because think about that. How, how has diversity work been done thus far? Well, you're supposed to just listen. You're supposed to just hear from the people who are in quote unquote marginalized groups and yeah. you, you're supposed to just automatically through osmosis, get this information and do the right thing. Well, most people don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. So I asked Foster to leave us and most importantly, Shaq with some concrete advice. I think sometimes we tend to doubt ourselves. Either I'm making too big a deal of it or I didn't make enough big a deal of it. Either way, we have to trust our gut. Shaq did that. He told higher-ups how he felt, and when things didn't reconcile themselves after that, he moved on. Confrontation is hard for a lot of people, but strictly professionally speaking, this one is squarely on your boss. May I suggest implementing a radical new everyone wash your own dishes policy at the office? Or at the very least, Put cleaning kitchen in the job description for your next office manager. No more crying over dirty dishes. That's our show. You can send us your Ask Code Switch questions on Instagram at NPR Code Switch. If email's more your thing, ours is codeswitch at npr.org. You can subscribe to the podcast on the NPR app or, you know, wherever you're listening right now. And if you'd like to support our work, you can sign up for Code Switch Plus. It's small, but it makes a really big difference for us. And bonus, you get to listen to every Code Switch episode without any ad breaks. You can check it out at plus.mpr.org slash Code Switch. And thanks to everyone who is already a Code Switch Plus subscriber. This episode was produced by Skylar Swenson. It was edited by Verilyn Williams. Our engineer was Gilly Moon. Our fact check was by Greta Pittinger. And a big thanks to our listener, Shaquille Stewart, for sending us this question. Also want to say 
A very special thanks to Lauren Gonzalez, our project manager, as well as Cher Vincent, Yolanda Sanguini, and the entire content development team for helping make this series possible. Finally, a big shout out to the rest of the Code Switch Massive, Christina Kala, Javier Lopez, Jess Kung, Leah Danella, Dahlia Mortada, Courtney Stein, Jean Demby, and B.A. Parker. This is Ask Code Switch. I'm Lori Lizarraga. Call your auntie. This message comes from NPR sponsor Greenhouse. Greenhouse brings the best hiring tools together in one platform, so you can make the smartest, most fair hiring decisions for your team. Hire better all together with Greenhouse. Visit greenhouse.com to learn more. Support for this NPR podcast and the following message come from Amgen, a biotechnology pioneer leading the fight against the world's toughest diseases such as cancer, heart disease, asthma, and osteoporosis. In a new era of human health, Amgen continues to accelerate the pace of change, operating sustainably and drawing upon deep knowledge of science to push beyond what's known today. With each decade, they reliably deliver powerful new therapies to patients. Learn more at Amgen.com.